Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. We are in Genesis chapter number 43. Come, let's look at this disjointed, disgruntled, messed up family, the family of Jacob, as we pick up again with the story of Joseph. Mm -hmm. We left them yesterday after the boys had returned, minus Simeon with all the grain in their sacks, plus the surprise silver that came along with it. And Jacob is upset. What do you mean I've got to send Benjamin down there with you? Oh, no, there's no way I'm letting this, my youngest, my son of Rachel, the only remembrance I've got of Rachel, go down to Egypt with you. No, you got, well, I know you guys, you've been in trouble all this time. You'll not bring him back either. Jacob is adamant. So they sit back and begin to, you know, use the grain they brought back, but uh, there's not peace in this household. There's an empty chair where Simeon used to sit. What about the rest of Simeon's family? How do they feel about this idea of Jacob, that he's not willing to go rescue uh, their head of household from Egypt? It's it's just a, a disturbed feeling around this household. Everybody's walking on eggshells, afraid of what to say, afraid of bringing up the subject. Swindoll puts it this way. He said, guilt plagued these sons of Jacob. It weighed heavily on their shoulders and whispered in their ears. On more than a few occasions, they had relived what they had done to their younger brother, Joseph, over 20 years earlier. And all the recent events to and from Egypt had pricked their conscience. They remembered, but still they had not yet fully repented of their evil ways. <laughs> but they would. Oh, yes, they would. So we pick up in Genesis chapter 43, where it says, Now the famine was still severe in the land. So when they had eaten all the grain they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go back and buy us a little more food. And now all of a sudden, the hunger pangs are getting to Jacob. He said, that, You know, the famine is not lifted here. There are no crops in the field. Go get us something to eat, guys. But of course, Judah said to him, now the man warned us solemnly, the man, who is the man? Man is Joseph. They just don't know it yet. Remember, he said, you, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. If you'll send our brother along with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go down because the man said to us, you will not see my face again unless your brother is with you. So Israel asked, well, why did you bring this trouble on me by telling the man you had another brother? Really? This is what you're going to say, Jacob, at this point? Uh, you know, just throw blame back. Why well, would you even tell him that I had another brother in the first place? He's heard the story. He knows the story. Yet he has to bring this up. You know, the accusation is there. You know, you, you're against me. You know, you're trying to just something's not right here. And so, once again, in, in, in his elder years, Jacob, now known as Israel, remember his name has been changed, can do nothing more than just accuse his own boys. In verse 7, they replied, the man questioned us closely about ourselves and our families. Your father's still living, he asked us. Do you have another brother? We simply answered his questions. How were we to know what he would say? That he would say, bring your brother down here. So then Judah steps in. Remember, it's Reuben that's already said, hey, I'll take responsibility for Benjamin. I'll make sure he gets back. Even to say something as awful as, well, look, kill my sons if I don't bring him back. Yeah. Come on. I mean, I, perhaps that was hyperbole, but by the same token, Reuben has already stepped in and tried to take responsibility. Now it's Judah who does the same. Judah said to Israel, his father, send the boy along with me and we will go at once so that we and you and our children may live and not die. I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. If I don't bring him back to you and set him here before you, I'll bear the blame before you all of my life. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. So now he's throwing this back in Jacob's lap saying, listen, You've already brought more food back if you just let us go down there with Benjamin. Think about this, Dad. You're going to starve us to death? Verse 11, then their father Israel said to them, all right, if it must be. I mean, they've ganged up on him. There's no way out of this. He said, if it must be, then do this. Well, put some of the best products of the land in your bags. Take them down to the man as a gift. 
a little balm and a little honey, some spices and myrrh, some pistachio nuts and almonds. Take double the amount of silver with you, for you must return the silver that was put back in the mouths of your sacks. Perhaps it was a mistake. Take your brother also and go back to the man at once. And may God Almighty grant you mercy before the man so that he will let your other brother and Benjamin come back with you. As for me, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took the gifts and doubled the amount of silver and Benjamin also. And they hurried down to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph. Now we're going to pick this up next week and wake up in the word on Monday. But for right now, I want you to see what's taking place. God is using difficult circumstances to drive this family to the place where he wants them to be anyhow. It's going to be a place, first of all, of repentance, where they will get to receive the forgiveness that's been there waiting for them all along, if they had just been able to see it, to get out of the guilt of their sin, to get back into a position where God will bless them, take care of them, and multiply them as a family and ultimately as a nation. I mean, all of these things are going to be available to them if they will just respond and get down there. How many of us put away and, and prevent the blessings of God from coming into our life by hanging on to our sin, hanging on to our guilt, and not going to the place we know we should be? You know, I run into people now who, you know, because of the pandemic, it's it's hard to say, hey, why aren't you in church? Have you noticed that people just now will avoid it and they'll say, well, you know, it's it's safer to stay home. Is it really? And, you know, with all the different ways we can worship, you know, I, I, we put everything out just like you're watching us over, uh, over videos, whether you're watching on YouTube or Rumble or some other platform. And as you're watching these videos, even to try to grow spiritually, there are, there are options out there for us. Yet I run into people who I will find have spent most of their week outside of the times they did have to work, if they're working at all, saying, well, you know, I've been playing so many games on my computer, or I play games on my phone, or I've watched uh, every every movie that Netflix is putting out, and all these kinds of things. I'm like, really? Are you using this time to grow closer to the Lord, or are you wasting the time? You know, in this whole lesson today, we've got one terrible picture. Jacob has said, we're going to put everything on hold. We're not going to act on this situation. You're not going back to Egypt. You're not going to see the man. We're afraid of the man. Listen, friends, the man that you need to get in touch with, the Lord Jesus Christ, is readily available to you, and he does not want to punish you. He does not want to beat you up. He wants to bless you. Go see the man. It's time that if you put some uh, put some real effort and some of the hours that you're doing other things into your spiritual life, you will find that he will grow you up and make you stronger both spiritually and in ways that he might open ideas from your heart and your mind that might bless you in other ways as well. But you're not going to be able to access those blessings unless you go see the man. Well, that's enough of that illustration today. You can tell I could take off and preach on this a while. But what, what's holding you back? What's holding you back from your relationship with God? He's there. He's available. He's waiting. Spend time with him. Go see the man. And he'll make everything at least plain in your sight. He'll bring, bring things into perspective. And he'll allow you to make it through. Just as this family is going to make it through the most difficult time they'd ever face. A period of seven years of famine that's putting people into bad situation all around the world. They're going to make it through, but only because they go to see Joseph. Yeah, we're going to start. We're going to start picking up on some of these things that we pull together next week as we finish up the story and and look at the amazing number of ways that Joseph foreshadows Jesus as well. Well, listen. Join me tomorrow as we're going to look at the events of this past week and put them in biblical perspective. And of course, have our message here on Sunday. If you can't worship with us, worship with somebody this week. Some of the leaders, some of God's family, any way you can, in person or virtually, so that we can gain the strength we need to see it through these days. Folks, the famine is upon the land. It's a different kind of famine. A lot of us are gaining weight because it's not a famine of food. 
It's a spiritual famine. We need to find our way to God's table and feast with him if we're going to make it through. Well, thank you so much for joining me today for this edition of Wake Up in the Word. We'll do this all again next week right here. Make it a pattern. Make it a habit of your life to get in his word every single day. God bless you.